All's fair in love and war, and politics is a little bit of both. John Dadian joins us here this morning to uh, talk about the upcoming presidential debate, and we'll talk about a little bit about what's happening on the Democratic side as well. Mm. Uh, this really does emphasize the fact that no matter what you've ever saw, said or done in your entire life, if you run for public office, it's fair game. It's always been that way, but especially for the past 20 years in the era of the Internet, in the era of social media, et cetera. And I'm amazed how many people, big names in politics, still don't get that. Yeah, they'll, 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 t they'll tweet me stuff that I, I counsel some elected officials saying, don't do that. That. Don't do that stuff. Okay, well, a Trump is Trump, and I'm, there's plenty of material going back, you know, as far as we want to go with him in terms of, you know, him saying things that raise eyebrows. Does he have a chance at being the president of the United States? Absolutely. And I'm in a minority when I say that. Uh, but I use, and it's unfair to compare people, but I use the example of Ross Perot going back to 92. Two points. If Ross Perot hadn't dropped out the first time, most historians agree he could have won the presidency, gone all the way. The fact that he dropped out and then came back in, he still got 20 percent of the vote, and that was enough to change the election. Can you imagine if he hadn't gone back in, George H. Bush, 41, would have gotten re-election and we never would have had Bill Clinton. It can affect history. Well, Trump has obviously touched a nerve, and he's, he's struck a chord with a lot of people that feel disenfranchised in politics. They don't feel like their voice is being heard and the country's headed in the wrong direction, it's time to shake it up. There's two main categories that are big Trump supporters, and that's the news media and Saturday Night Live. They, <laughs> they want him to stay in. Well, count us in that group, because we're, we're in, kind you of betcha. enjoying the show here at this point. All right, let's put up a graphic here. Uh, there's 10 candidates are going to square off in a debate. Right now, if the debate were held today, it would be these 10. And we played a little game in the newsroom, name the candidate, and I've got to admit, I, I think I got nine out of ten, but That's there was one. There was one I couldn't identify. Oh, really? In there. Um, yeah, and I'm not going to tell you which one it was, but <laughs> I'm curious. I, I'm wondering uh, how the rest of the world is is looking at this right now. Well, it is interesting, and uh, there's several things going on as far as this formula. The top ten. They just announced this morning, but basically an hour ago, because the first debate's on Fox News, that they are going. The main debate's going to be at, uh, on August 6th at 9 p.m. They're going to have a second debate prior to that at 5 p.m. the same day, and that is going to be all the candidates who didn't make the top ten. Okay, so there, there's going to be a, a debate of the folks that are really down in the, the lower tier, just barely polling any numbers at all, but they're going to have a chance to be heard. Well, that's not accurate because here's what the problem is with this so-called formula. Oh, okay. You have the top ten, okay? But of those ten, the, the second half of the five are about the same as the uh, next five that don't make the top ten. Now, keep in mind, a lot of people overlook this. You always hear the phrase, a lot of people don't understand, margin of error. Okay, so here's two things if you look at these numbers. A lot of people who are uh, between 10 and 16, they're within one-tenth of a percent of the other candidates. So if you put the margin of error, which is about 3 percent, any one of those could be. So the top 10 could be, uh, literally, it's only the top three that are the firm ones. That are. So this is an inherently flawed system for choosing who gets into a debate and who does. But you've got to have some up there on stage, you know, all trying to express their opinion in one evening. And that's why I support it. And that's why this new system, as far as having a second debate prior, is good for this reason. People are bored. They're not going to watch the whole thing. However, even in either one of the debates, if any of the candidates has a good soundbite, knocks it out of the ballpark or whatever, that'll make the news, and that might propel some of the lower-tiered ones up. All you have to do is do the math, though, and you realize there's 10 people speaking during this. Uh, you know, even if it was a two-hour debate, you divide that up amongst questions and then time to respond, time to follow up. Each candidate's going to get just maybe a few minutes of airtime during this. It, it, so absolutely, Donald absolutely. Trump's not going to be happy with that, is he? Oh, I think he's going to be very happy because it's going to be focused on him without a doubt. No but matter what. Okay. Here's the strategy that I'm looking at is if you're one of the candidates other than Donald Trump, does each of them make try to slam Donald Trump, which they may do to get on the air, et cetera? Does he slam each of them or does he just pick Jeb Bush and maybe Walker, the top two, et cetera? That's where all the strategy of the different camps come in, and it's going to be very interesting to see what they decide. Okay. Well, let's... Uh, quickly before we go here on the flip side, the Democratic side, Hillary Clinton still supposedly the clear front runner, uh, but she's said and done nothing during this time, no, and she doesn't have to. 
And it doesn't really matter what headlines come out. People are going to vote for it if they've already made up their mind to vote for it, it looks like. Well, not to be devil's advocate, but when everybody says that Hillary Clinton either has the nomination or the election, some people are saying she's definitely in the next president, etc. I remind people, those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. This time uh, in 07, before the 08 election, etc., nobody had heard of Barack Obama. Everybody had heard of him at that point. Everybody had uh, said that she had the nomination. We all know in history that didn't happen. So I am not, uh, and keep in mind, there are some big name Democrats in the wing. Jim Webb, what, keep your eye on him, former senator from Virginia. And keep your eye on somebody who hasn't declared on the Democratic side yet, Andrew Cuomo of New York. Very interesting. All right, John Dating, always oh, good to see you. Good I know we, we'll come back after the debate and see how everybody Fun did. Fun times. Okay.